I've been talking to the insects here and I've asked them to be on their best behaviour today. And so the butterfly's just letting you know they got the memo. I don't know about you, but I don't think this is what most people think Wodonga looks like. I'm Karen and today we're at Swainsona Reserve. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this reserve and I'd like to introduce you to why I think this is one of the really special places in our region. The Swainsona Reserve is a little pocket reserve. It's only small. From West Wodonga, it's a couple of minutes drive up Fell Timber Creek Road. From the parking area, there's a really short walk. Now along the short walk, you've got a couple of spots where you can stop and sit and a couple of lookouts like this. It's a really great way to dip your toe into nature or if you haven't got much time to get out and about, it's a great place to come. So this reserve is being cared for by a whole range of people. There's interest in the rare and the special native plants that are here and animals. The Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning are involved in helping to oversee that. Parklands Aubrey Wodonga do more of the management of the tracks and overlooking some of the infrastructure and helping to manage some of the pests or weeds that might be here. But a whole load of people from different parts of the community have also been involved. People have come here and done working bees to help create the tracks and to help build the infrastructure. People love to come here and to learn about nature. So often school groups have been involved and sometimes that might be in working bees like nest box monitoring or planting. But other times it's, it's because this is a really easy way to access a whole load of special things. So this year we've had the amazing opportunity to do some work with the Wodonga Urban Land Care Network and we've been able to kind of get some more information about some amazing citizen science projects um, that are going on locally, so things like the Wild Pollinator Count and also that are, coming, um, that, are, that are going on around Australia. So we've got the Frog ID project and also iNaturalist. And um, our school sustainability team has had a lot of fun experimenting with some frog recordings and we've actually identified four frog species. So that's really exciting for us um, as, as a team and as a college. Frog ID has an awesome kind of selection and, and resources um, page where you can go and look up um, all the different frogs that are in your area or, or around um, where you're camping or where you're hiking and you can um, just listen to their recording, have a look at their photos and, and get some information about how big they are and, and where their usual habitats are. Favourite frog? Ooh. I like the common eastern froglet. It makes a very cute sound at night. So yeah, common eastern froglet's my favourite. Uh, my name is Tessa Quinlan. Hi, my name's Abby Quinlan. Hi, my name's Carla Vogelsang. And we are here today at Swainsona Reserve. We've done a little bit of hill hiking um, as part of flexible learning at our school. So that's been, it's been a nice opportunity to kind of yeah, get, get away from school and into nature and just be able to enjoy the different things that all the reserves, um, local reserves have to offer. Getting to enjoy the beautiful scenery, listening to the beautiful birds in the trees, but you also um, always learn something new, whether it's a, a new species of butterfly or um, seeing a, uh, a new species of plant. Today we saw a stinking pettywort, so that was, was really cool. And it's really beautiful just having something so kind of open and, and untouched um, right under your nose, so it's fantastic. One of my favourite things about coming out here is, you know, getting to have some exercise out in the fresh air, getting out of the house and really coming to see all the wildlife and the bird species. Um, my favourite thing about getting outdoors is that you get to have fun with your friends and you get to make really good memories. I just want to set the scene of where we are. So I've said that Swainsona is a small pocket, but it sits adjoining other things in the landscape. So further on from here, I can see from this ridge, I can see where the farmland starts. So the land has been cleared and we have grazing and not so much bush. Up here, where Swainsona ends, it joins onto a much bigger reserve. It's part of the Wodonga Hills Reserve, and you might know that spot as Hunchback Hill or McFarlands. Maybe you've even been mountain biking there, or you go walking there. You can spend a lot of time because it's a really big space. Swainsona sits on the side of that. Down here in the gully, we've got the start of Fell Timber Creek. So, in summer, it's just a trickle. 
in winter it's rushing down and when we get down the bottom I'm keen to tell you why this is called Swainsona Reserve. It's got special significance. So this is the smooth darling pea or Swainsona gallagafolia. It's a pretty stunning pea. We can come here and admire them while they're flowering. So in late spring into summer they do this and then the flowers go away, they set seed. But there's an important step that happens in between. These, like many other native plants, rely on insects to move the pollen from flower to flower, which is how they get their seeds. And the seeds are how we get more plants. So I like to come and sit, enjoy the flowers, but watch which insects are coming. Often I'll come and it can be quite hot. It sounds like a funny thing to do, but it's really interesting. The insects kind of get used to you sitting here and I'll take lots of photos so there are lots of native bees that come and they've got a particular technique where they land on the flower and push down so that they can access the nectar and pollen but while I was watching the native bees I also saw there were flies and we don't necessarily give credit to flies as pollinators but did you know that a type of fly is actually the pollinator that gives us chocolate it's exciting to me because as well as this being a rare plant that we have to come to a special place to see, not much is known about these insects and this role of pollination. We can be taking photos that contribute and help us to build a knowledge of which critters are pollinating which plants and where. This reserve is being managed to try to let the native plants and animals thrive. They've excluded grazing by stock because the stock was trampling special plants and eating down too much. So now, instead, the grazing is done by kangaroos and wallabies. Weeds can also be a threat. So as the weeds take over, there's no room for the native plants and often they'll drop out of a system and we lose them. What's great in a little reserve like this, it's not that hard for each of us to be keeping an eye on where those weeds are popping up. And when we see them, it's not that hard to be pulling them out just as they start. When we all do a little bit, especially early on, means that we don't get a weed problem that's really out of control or that needs big and heavy and difficult machinery. Probably the best thing about coming out to a working bee or, or even a weeding day, it's actually all the conversations you have and all the things you learn on the side. There's always someone who knows more about those bird calls that I don't know. There's always someone who will comment on how things are going in other parts of Wodonga. And it's funny because when I come back here by myself, I can hear those people and they're sharing their knowledge with me every time I visit. You know, we have such beauty and, and such, such a great opportunity um, around us, the beautiful wildlife, beautiful, beautiful plants. And we, it's, I think it's our job as the next generation to really protect that. And so with that in mind, I think um, in the future, I really want to keep on um, trying to do as much as I can in the sustainability field, whatever I can, whether it's raising more awareness or speaking to other people who maybe, um, maybe haven't been able to come down here and experience the amazing, um, the amazing scenery or hike on Hunchback. And so, um, yeah, I think that's something that I really want to do in the future and, and keep on committing to. Yeah.